Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so what we want to be doing with this brass dragon is of course we want to get ourselves brass. So I'm going to be using Brassy Brass from Vallejo here. And we're going to be using it to cover the entirety of the miniature. So absolutely everything we want to cover in this Brassy Brass. So I've got a nice big wide brush here so I can really cover a lot of area. But don't forget to uh, not neglect any of those little nooks and crannies. Uh, especially on this miniature there is a lot of uh, indentation, nice detail. So we want to make sure we cover everything. Now... Uh, this does take a, a couple of coats to do. I think this took me uh, three coats in total to get everywhere I wanted to make sure I had no uh, gaps in any um, of the primer showing through the miniature. And of course, this is a um, WizKids model, so they're already pre-primed. So we we can start straight away out of the packet and paint this brass dragon right up with the color. Okay, so now with our dragon all completely brassed up, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some known oil. So Nolan Oil is going to be good for uh, placing over metallic paints as it gives a nice uh, deep effect and really brings out all those uh, shadows and all those details that I really, really enjoy, especially on metallics with Nolan Oil. I just love the way it comes out. So we want to give everywhere a coating with this Nolan Oil now so we can really bring back all the detail that you might be missing since we covered it so much in a shiny metallic color. So this is going to help uh, dull it down a little bit as well as that it's also gonna make it so we can see all of those nice little ridges and folds and scales and stuff all over the miniature so it's a, just a nice easy step and make sure that you get it absolutely everywhere because we covered everything in the brass for the step since it's such a big part of this miniature we want to make sure we get it absolutely everywhere so into every little nook and cranny and then wait for it to completely dry as well and be careful not to smudge it all over your fingers so once that known oil is completely dry, I'm going to come back in with the Brassy Brass now. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be using it as a dry brush. And we're just going to be dry brushing it on some of the uh, high points of the miniature to really bring that uh, brass color back into it and give it that nice shiny look. Uh, especially since uh, we dulled everything down with the known oil um, and we've gotten all those nice little uh, grooves and crevices and everything showing up in the miniature now with all that known oil in there. We want to bring back some of our uh, metallic color and our lightness back into the miniature. And the best way to do that is to dry brush over uh, most of the areas where you want all those highlights to be. Okay, so with that all done, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some khaki color. So now I'm going to be using uh, khaki to be doing the bottom of the scales here, all the scales that he has running along his neck and chest just underneath here, because uh, I want something to separate out this brass dragon from just being completely one color. So adding in a little bit of difference like this is going to make it pop a little bit more on the table and give it a little bit more visual interest. So I'm just doing all the bottom scales all along the neck, down the belly, to the end of the tail, just catch, catching these bottom ones here. Um, now this here is, and of course, a metallic color, which I know Metallic dragons seem to be all metallic, but I want to add a little bit of visual interest, and I think uh, by giving it some other colors is going to help out with this. Okay, so once those belly scales are all dry, we're going to come in now with some Seraphim Sepia, and all we're going to be doing is applying the Seraphim Sepia wash all over the areas where we just painted with the khaki. So giving it a nice liberal coating there. It's also, with the Seraphim Sepia, it's going to help uh, tie it in a little bit as well with the color of our brass that we've already got all over the dragon and make it look a little bit more realistic. So just being careful to make sure as well that you don't let the Seraphim Sepia run off into uh, the brass color in there as well. We don't want to be mixing too much in there. So then once our Seraphim Sepia is all dried up, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some Skeleton Bone, which is an even nice and lighter color. And what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to be applying it in small uh, little vertical stripes to indicate some sort of like a wearing marks and sort of high, edge highlighting the areas around the scales to really bring them out and make them look like they're sort of reflecting off the sun and also give it a sort of like a worn realistic look on the edge of scales since it's going to be scraping his uh, neck and belly along things so we want to show a little bit of wear and tear in there and not make it so it's a pristine 
underbelly in there as well as well as it of course giving it that little bit more visual interest that we want to have to this uh, really single color model so once we have all those scales all prettied up what we're going to do now is come in with some orc blood and for our orc blood here all we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing it on the tongue to give there a nice another color to add into there because this is a very uh very one color heavy model so we want to add in little bits of visual interest with a few other colors in there and this uh, purple here is going to really help stick out with another color okay so now we're going to come in with some jungle green and this we're going to use for the eyes of our dragon here and i chose green rather than yellow because it's going to stand out a lot more and give that more vibrant punch i feel um i was originally going to go with yellow but i wanted something with a little bit more visual pop and i think this nice bright jungle green is going to help out with that and like i said we want to try and separate out some of these colors since it is a very one color heavy model and just adding little bits of color and like the tongue and the eyes and the underbelly it's just going to help out with those little parts to bring up the model in a little bit better way okay so now with his eye all painted up we're going to come in now with just some plain old black any black will do i'm just using vallejo here and all i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be placing a tiny small dot in there to get that dragon's eye now you have to be as steady as you possibly can here to really get that eye in there um if you need to you might want to put a little bit of black on the end of uh a needle just to really get that dot in there and as well as that we also want to be painting up all the claws on our dragon as well okay and now what we're going to be doing is i'm going to be coming in with some contrast paint here some blood angels red and what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be applying this over the sections of the wings where we uh, want this nice bright red to be since brass dragons have nice red wings uh, that go with their metallic brass coloring but the wings especially in the artwork and stuff like that they're a little bit metallic themselves so adding the contrast paint over top of a metallic actually tints the metallic color to the color you need it so for in this case and in instance we want a red and we're just applying it over top of our metallic colors and you can see it's turning the red into a slight metallic color so it's going to really tie in nice and well uh, and really get the effect that we want to keep this metallic dragon a metallic dragon without having to come in with some flat matte paints and sort of give a huge separation between the metallic scales and the uh, matte wings that it would be if we didn't use our contrast paint here so this is an awesome uh, effect and thing you can do with contrast paints that can really uh, help bring a miniature to the next level and really help tie all this stuff together and now with those lovely red wings picked out we're going to come in and do some highlights so just using some brassy brass here with some chainmail silver mixing them in a roughly uh two parts brassy brass and one part chainmail silver here just to lighten up that brassy brass and give it as a good highlight now you could uh use gold here to highlight it um, i was afraid if i highlighted the miniature too much it would come out looking gold and this is a brass dragon and i don't want to paint a gold dragon so i wanted to try and avoid that situation so I just highlight, added some uh, bright silver to my brassy brass and make it more of a very light brass color. But again, this is totally up to you. And all I'm going to be doing is just going around uh, anywhere in the miniature where we have some nice raised edges. So the face is a good example here. We've got some nice high ridges on here. As well as we want to be picking out some of the high points on the scales that are nice and prominent to really help highlight your miniature. And then all we need to do is base it up. And with all that completed, we have finished painting up our Brass Dragon from the Dungeons & Dragons WizKids range. And you can see just by adding in some awesome little effects like the little contrast paint on there to give those red wings a metallic look, we've amped up the miniature by a whole lot by just doing a couple of little things. And I hope this has been useful for you guys, whether you like to follow along with me or you just enjoy watching me paint up some cool miniatures. But with all that out of the way guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.